Well, I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, Art Deco and Elgin's role in that movement. Uh, began in the mid-1920s with a large exposition in Paris. Um, it was so influential that the Elgin National Watch Company actually sent representatives over to Paris to see exactly what was going on. Um, and they brought back some ideas and in front of us are some of those uh, products that they, they produced. In 1928 they came out with a, a Elgin Parisian watch line. They went to Paris, contracted with six of the high fashion designers of the time, and asked them to design watches. In June of 1928, the Elgin Watch Company put out a two-page ad in the Saturday Evening Post to introduce that line. Part of the uh, advertisements were individual watches, and we have been lucky enough to obtain a few of those that are in the ads. This is the very first time that watches got had enamel on them of color. Uh, again, very, uh, very new and innovative. The dials were not the normal round dial that everyone had seen, but they were uh, very asymmetrical, which was part of the deco movement, linear and asymmetrical. You get to a point that they had a watch called the Lady and the Tiger, and this is a large photograph of the actual watch, which is in this little display case. The uh, watch, the Lady and the Tiger, was based on a uh, proverb back in the 1800s on picking a lady or a tiger, and it caught on. It was a very attractive watch, very highly sought after by collectors 100 years later, basically. The cases um, tended to be made by independent companies who would contract out with individual watch manufacturers. Um, so many times you would buy a movement at a jewelry store, and the jeweler would have a movement and a case. And now let's go and pair up the movement with a case that you like. These watches, uh, the, these meaning the wrist watches, started getting into the cases being um, mailed and sent to the watch manufacturers. Their employees then would case the watches on site, and so you would buy the whole watch at the jewelry store. The Lady and the Tiger watch is, is rare, it's highly sought after by collectors. But we really don't know, uh, even though it's considered part of the Parisian line, if one of the designers was in fact one of the Paris designers that were contracted out earlier. There's a thought that, that it was actually designed in-house in Elgin by one of their designers. They had a whole sector in the uh, factory that designed watch cases. Making a million watches a year, they had need for a lot of different styles of cases. Most of the designing was done in-house. Not only did uh, Elgin design the watches and the cases Art Deco, they also got into the display boxes that would be in the jewelry store. This particular box is very uh, Deco. You can notice the word Elgin across the top. It shows the linear aspect of Art Deco. One of the interesting things is that the Elgin American Ladies Compact line was not part of the Elgin National Watch Company. It was in fact part of the Illinois Watch Case Company who worked with Elgin and other manufacturers to make watch cases. Um, over the course of time they went off into ladies cosmetic items uh, and smoking items. And we have a few items of those here. This is a very deco uh, cigarette lighter as is this. Part of the Art Deco movement was shapes. Linear was very important. Geometrical shapes, very important. Here's an example of a compact that is also shown in this catalog ad. If you look at the designs, it's very geometric and very Art Deco. Um, Elgin American put out some of the finest Art Deco pieces around and um, collectors are very happy to have a few of them. Um, if we go up to this catalog page, we're trying to see if we can get the actual pieces for the entire page. We've got three of the nine. Um, we always are looking for the Art Deco uh, Elgin American Compact. Art Deco continued on through the late 30s, and one of the last uh, big events that, that had a lot of Art Deco in it was the New York World's Fair in 1939 and 1940. And in the middle here we do have an Elgin American Compact that has the uh, 
Krylon and Perisphere, which were the uh, symbols of the New York World's Fair. In front of it is a postcard showing the Ocean Pavilion at that World's Fair. You can see the very deco look of the building. We talk about Art Deco and the uh, symmetrics of the style. And this watch hanging here is a perfect example. Uh, the dial is triangular. It just it is so far removed from what a normal wristwatch had been previous to the Art Deco movement. Elgin was doing so well and liked the Deco experience that they even went to the point of putting out mirrors. This one was father time at the top and the linear aspects of the Art Deco would have been in a jewelry store and you would have been able to just have a better angle of the watch. Um, and then of course on the end we have what's known as a point of sale piece and very Art Deco look to it. Obviously with the colors and the heart it was meant to be in a jewelry store sometime in February for Valentine's Day. Art Deco influenced many aspects of life including architecture, fashion, and film. The Elgin Watch Company played a large part because of the watch movements and the watch cases they were producing. Uh, the Illinois Watch Case Company and their Elgin American counterpart. One of the nice things about the Elgin Watch Company is that they produce so many watches that there's still many of them around. The quality was there, people wouldn't put them in a drawer instead of throwing them out. And for collectors like myself, uh, the internet has, has made finding these watches a lot easier than it was in the past, and uh, we have fun doing that.